Chase at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. The Alamo Dome eliminating the need for appointments for a COVID-19 vaccine. We'll tell you what you need to know if you still need to get your shot. President Biden hits the road to sell his recovery plan. I'm Mike Ajachi reporting in Washington. Coming up, we'll take a look at his first stop in Georgia. And taking a live look outside, it's not that cloudy. It looks like it's going to be a good Friday. The question Friday. is, how much more rain are we going to get? It feels like rain to me. Good morning, everybody. It's Friday. It's April 30th, and Alicia Pereira is in for Stephanie Cerna this morning. Hey. Good morning. Morning. How you doing? Waking up still because I couldn't remember if it was Friday or not. <laughs> it is definitely Friday out there. Did you have any rain on the windshield coming in this oh, morning? Oh, yes. My mm -hmm. Rain-X doesn't work, though, enough because it's just those little drizzles. Yes, little drizzles. There is activity on radar this morning, and if you're planning on going to the coast today for any reason, Perhaps cancel those plans. It is crazy busy down there on the coast right now. And it's going to get crazier, busier. And uh, you know, who would have thought that about three or four days ago we would have said we're going to get too much rain? Yeah, I mean, it looks like yeah. we are definitely looking at a, at a drought buster here. And especially, I mean, we've already picked up a bunch more than three inches out at the airport officially in the past couple of days. And then we are looking at flooding potential in the overnight hours and tomorrow. First of all, it is a wet commute this morning. As you can see, the roads out there, uh, 410 by the airport, are definitely on the damp side. So take, uh, you know, take your time once you hit the roads. Don't dawdle this morning. It's going to take a little longer. And there's uh, some of the showers. And we were talking about what's going on on the coast there and just off the coast. It is, uh, I mean, just going gangbusters there. So this is just one of two systems that are going to sort of converge on us in the overnight hours. This one's going to sort of creep on in here. We've got another one coming in from the west. I'll talk more about that in a few moments. But just to look at uh, some of the showers out there, portions of the uh, hill country, and then in and around town, a few light showers, a couple of uh, moderate ones here and there. Haven't seen anything in our vicinity as far as lightning. There will be one or two uh, thunderstorms thrown in today. Temperatures mid 60s, very consistent thanks to the humidity. Cloud cover keeps things pretty consistent around here. Mold is on the high side. Pecan is moderate and throughout the rest of the morning, pretty much steady temperatures, few showers, uh, maybe a lightning strike here or there. I don't think we're going to see a lot of it. And then later on this afternoon, mid 70s showers and a few storms are going to be popping up around here, kind of off and on rain. Northeasterly wind 15, 20 miles per hour and gusting. Now we've got a couple of different things later on tonight from um, about Eagle Pass Del Rio down to the south. There is the small chance, the marginal chance for some of the thunderstorms uh, to be on the strong to potentially severe side. And then starting actually at seven o'clock this morning through seven o'clock tomorrow night, there is a flash flood watch. It includes kind of the eastern half of our metro area, San Antonio, New Braunfels down to Atascosa County, and then off to the east and down to the southeast. We're looking at the potential for uh, say two to four inches of rain off to the east and some locally heavier amounts on top of that. That's going to be in the overnight hours and pretty much the first portion of the day tomorrow. More on that coming up in just a couple of minutes. Alicia, Mark. Thanks so much, Mike. We do have a lot to talk about today. San Antonio Crime Stoppers need your help solving the murder of 17 year old Eric Torres. Torres was killed last week driving in the 7200 block of Hebner Road near Highway 16 in Leon Valley. San Antonio police say he had been shot. Our Stephen Cavazos is live north of downtown. Stephen, do investigators have any clue as to why this crime happened? Mark, it's still not sure. They're still not clear what prompted this all to happen. However, the search continues this morning. They say that they're searching for a black SUV that may have possibly been linked to a road rage incident. Now, what we want you to do is take a close look on your screen at home. Now, this happened just after 11 p.m. on April 19th. Now, San Antonio police say a dark colored SUV was heading westbound in the 7200 block of Hebner. That person behind the wheel then drove up alongside a red sedan, and that's when shots were fired into that sedan. Now, two passengers who were it, two passengers inside were injured, one being Torres. He later died as a result of those injuries. Investigators believe another red sedan similar to the one Torres was in may have been involved in a road rage incident with that suspect SUV minutes before the shooting happened. Of course, Crime Stoppers is offering a $5,000 reward for any information that could lead to any arrest. But of course, you can call the number on your screen. That's 210-224-7867. Reporting live north of downtown, Stephen Cavazos, KSAT 12 News. Mark Alicia. Thank you, Stephen. A silver alert has been issued by Castle Hills Police overnight. Take a look. This is 74 Mark Anthony Zubrod. He's about 5'8", 220 pounds, blonde hair, blue eyes. Was last seen around midnight 
wearing a white t-shirt and black shorts on Zornia Drive. That's between West Avenue and Northwest Military Highway. Officers say he took off in a silver 2012 GMC 1500 with license plate 1342 ODV. If you have any information on his whereabouts, contact Castle Hills Police at 210-342-2341. And now let's take a look at COVID-19 numbers here in Bear County. Metro Health reporting 341 new COVID-19 cases here at home. Luckily, no new deaths have been reported. Meanwhile, there are 240 COVID-19 patients in our local hospitals. 67 people are in the ICU and 44 are on ventilators. When it comes to vaccines, starting today, you can simply drive up to the Alamo Dome in San Antonio. No appointment needed. Anyone 16 and older can stop by and get vaccinated. The Dome will be open Tuesday through Saturday from 9 a.m. to 6.30 p.m. This change comes as the site has seen an increasing number of no-shows. So far, more than 839,000 people in Bear County have received at least one dose of the COVID-19 vaccine. 436 right now, President Biden marking his first 100 days in office by going on the road. Meanwhile, Republicans are pushing back on the president's agenda and its $4 trillion price tag. ABC's Ike Ajachi is in Washington with the latest. President Biden hitting the road to sell his massive recovery plan. Before stepping into Marine One to head to Georgia, cameras capturing this moment between the president and the first lady. Mr. Biden picking up a flower for his wife. Once on the ground, the president holding a rally for the state that handed him a Democratic majority in Congress. You changed America. You began to change America. And you're helping us prove that democracy, democracy can still deliver for the people. The president reiterating the importance of his plan. It is a, it's a once in a generation investment in America. He's calling for more than $4 trillion in new spending by proposing a massive child care and education plan, including universal pre-K, tuition-free community college, and paid family leave. He's also urging Congress to pass his infrastructure bill, arguing that it will create millions of jobs. Republicans are comparing it to a spending spree. He could have done his speech in about 30 seconds. He could have walked up and said, I'm President Biden, thank you for watching, here's my message. I want all of you to send every bit of your money and freedom to Washington. During his rally, demonstrators interrupting Biden's speech, shouting to the president to abolish ICE. I agree with you. I'm working on it, man. Give me another five days. Toward the end of his rally, Mr. Biden telling the American people that he's optimistic about the future. America's on the move again. We're choosing hope over fear, truth over lies, light over darkness, and we're working. We're working again. President Biden's next stop will be in Philadelphia, where he'll speak outside the 30th Street Station. He's doing that in order to commemorate the 50th anniversary of Amtrak. Ike Jachi, ABC News, Washington. More overnight news. At least 44 people have been killed. Dozens more hurt in a stampede at a religious gathering in northern Israel. 20 of them are reportedly in critical condition. Officials say the injury is a result of overcrowding and not by the collapse of any structure at the site. Tens of thousands of people attend the event. It's the largest annual public event in Israel. And a group that claimed responsibility for hacking the Washington, D.C. Police Department is closing up shop. The group known as Babook now says Washington Police was its last target. They say they will make the source code of its malware public so others can use it. The group claimed it stole a massive amount of information. It also threatened to publish everything if it was not paid. Friday morning, we're just getting started here on GMSA. It's 438, about 66 degrees. And when it comes to recycling, it can be confusing what items are allowed. Ahead on GMSA, some things to keep in mind to ensure you're doing it correctly. It's getting harder to buy and rent homes after the break. Why the pandemic has made buying a home more difficult. And taking a live look outside with live cam, it's Friday. There are the clouds. It's going to be raining. You probably noticed some drizzle on your windshield. We'll be back with more. Welcome back. It's 442. Not only is it getting harder to buy a home, it's also getting more expensive to even rent one. Yeah, experts say a housing shortage is still to blame. It continues to drive up rent and home prices. According to a new report from Realtor.com shows people are looking to buy rather than rent. Experts say a shortage of homes has led to a competitive housing market. 45% of homes sold in the last year went for over the list price. A report on Redfin shows 
Homes that sold were on the market for an average of just 21 days before going under contract, making that the shortest time since 2012. So if you're on the hunt to buy a home, experts say don't stop looking. Housing market is dependent on the number of homes for sale, and experts say more homeowners are selling their properties as the pandemic seems to be slowing down. And when it comes to recycling, how do you know if you're doing it correctly? If you're known to blindly toss anything, paper or plastic into the recycling bin, you're probably not alone, but some of those things may not belong in the recycle. Here are a few things to remember when it comes to recycling. According to waste management, always remember to recycle clean bottles, cans, paper and cardboard. Be sure there's no liquid or food in the items. Never toss plastic bags into the recycling bin. So let's take a look at some items you can recycle. Again, plastic bottles, containers, food and beverage cans, paper, of course. Flattened cardboard, paperboard, food and beverage containers, glass bottles and containers. Bagged, bag recyclables. These are things you shouldn't recycle. Oh, yeah. should not recycle. Yes, okay, so we don't want to recycle, Alicia. Bag recyclables, any plastic wrapper film, flexible packaging like chip bags, cups with wax or plastic coatings, foam and plastic. You should also avoid putting these items in your recycle bin as well. Uh, tangling items like garden hoses, rope, etc. Dirty diapers, please no dirty <laughs> diapers. That is so Not a recycle. My goodness, why would you even think of that? Household items, clothing, textiles, etc. And then medical waste as well as garage waste. Things to think about. And it seems like every waste company is a little bit different on their rules on what they will or won't accept, especially when it comes to recyclables. But I mean a no-brainer, dirty diapers. Dirty diapers. Oh, we know where those are supposed to go, right, everybody? 444, about 66 degrees. And the first night of the NFL draft is in the books. Next on GMSA, we tell you about the player drafted into the Cowboys last night. Welcome back. The CDC has issued new guidance for the cruise industry, saying Americans could be back on the high seas as soon as July. ABC's Gio Benitez has the details in today's GMSA First Look. In this morning's GMA First Look, call it the cruising comeback. Tom McAlpin is the president and CEO of Virgin Voyages. He says they're ready to get sailing in America. Americans like to, to travel. They deserve it. They need to get out there. The cruise industry was shut down over a year ago when the pandemic hit. Now, bookings are soaring. Virtually every cruise line partner that we talk with is uh, seeing exceptional bookings for 2022 and beyond. But some possible rough legal waters. Florida's governor had previously banned companies in Florida from requiring vaccines. We fall under the, the jurisdiction of the CDC with regard to the rules and regulations and, and a regulatory body. These are things that will have to be sorted out. And coming up at 7 a.m., we'll have a live report from Port Miami and tell you the best time to book tickets to lock in low prices. With your GMA First Look, I'm Gio Benitez, ABC News, Miami. Let's talk Spurs on your Friday. One and Silver Black will be back on the court again tonight. They're traveling to Boston to take on the Celtics at the TD Garden. Tip-off is set for 6.30 San Antonio time. Pro Football Coverage, powered by Davis Law Firm. Well, the first night of the NFL draft is now in the books, and the Cowboys have made their selection. Dallas selected Micah Parsons with the 12th overall pick in the draft last night. He's a linebacker out of Penn State. He's collected 191 tackles, six and a half sacks, and six forced fumbles in two seasons in college ball. You know, I'm super excited. I got a mastermind head coach, Dan Quinn, uh, uh, defense coordinator, Dan Quinn. Great person I can learn from. I got great linebackers there I can lean on. So uh, I'm going to be in a competitive environment, and I'm at the earn mine. So I'm super excited to get there and add on to the tradition of great linebackers that come through the Cowboys. It's a great pick for Dallas. In case you're wondering, Texans fans, of course, Houston traded away all of their first and second round picks. So they won't be selecting a player until the third round. Again, kind of the leftovers and fallout from the Bill O'Brien days over in Houston. Unfortunate for the Texans. But good news for the Cowboys. Are you a Cowboys fan? No. Oh. I am not I a Cowboys fan. No. I, I lived in <laughs> Texas because I was an Air Force brat. Then I moved to the Washington area, and now okay. I'm a friend of the Washington football team. So it's oh. fun being a Washington fan in Dallas territory. That's what I'm a fan of. It's a, lo it's a lonely place, trust me. Yeah, I was going to say. Ooh.
Yeah. Mike? Wow. Good talk, Alicia. Yeah. All right. Uh, yes, Mike is here with a beautiful picture this morning. Do I have to sit between you two over there? So, please. Wow. Please. Come on over. Go line. They picked up a lines, picked up a um, like one of the top offensive line prospects, I think. Max Massey told me that. So. But yeah, getting a linebacker out of you know Penn State, it's like a linebacker factory up there. So beautiful picture, Mr. Childers. We haven't seen anything from you recently. Yep. Oh, beautiful picture painted by God. Thank you very much for that uh, KSAC Connect picture. Now, this picture is, uh, well, it's a little damp out there. We do have some showers. Your commute into work and school is going to be a little bit slower because obviously we have more of these off and on showers around here. The coast is getting and going to get hammered with a lot of rain and and this is going to continue. This whole system will kind of stay out here to the east, but there's another one that's going to sort of combine with us. But as far as we are concerned, we will continue to see, uh, again, some of these showers, a few of them out there in portions of the hill country. No lightning is being detected in our area right now, but there may be, um, you know, a couple of uh, lightning strikes here and there. Here's the computer model. And <laughs> this is a lot going to be going on in the next uh, about 24 to 36 hours. A lot of rain off here to the east. Throughout the rest of the afternoon, we'll have some scattered showers here and there. And notice as I put this into motion, there's going to be somewhat of a uh, kind of a comma shape here. There's an upper low, which is working its way in here. So that's going to combine with this, all this moisture coming in here from the Gulf. And that's going to give us some potentially very heavy rain, especially from San Antonio off to the east and there along the coastal plain. This is going to go on through a lot of the heavy stuff is going to be in the overnight hours and then through say about mid morning tomorrow, maybe a little bit of a lull, but we'll continue to have more showers throughout the day tomorrow and then everything continues to kind of move on out of here. Now this is just one computer model, but you can kind of uh, get a broad view of things and see that throughout the rest of today, not much for most of our area, but down there along the coast, they're getting a ton of rain. And even by the overnight hours, I mean, look at this, we're talking about two, three, four inches of rain. Uh, that may be a little overstated, but uh, there's going to be some spots where they get more than a half a foot of rain off to the east. And then this will continue again for the basically the first portion of the day. Flood uh, flash flood watch, pardon me. 7 o'clock this morning up until 7 o'clock tomorrow night. San Antonio, New Braunfels, Atascosa County off to the east. And then, of course, we do have that threat for some uh, thunderstorms that could be on the strong side. That's going to be down to the south tomorrow and uh, today, pardon me. And then tomorrow we do have the marginal risk for strong to severe storm all around the area. So some of those thunderstorms could get on the uh, the rough side. But for this situation, heavy rain is going to be the biggest uh, problem we're going to have to deal with, and that will be in the overnight hours. 72 today at noon, shower, a couple of thunderstorms out there, and then a high temperature today only up to 75 once again. Showers, a few storms tomorrow, and especially overnight, it is going to be heavy. Some of the rain from San Antonio, especially well off to the east, then we will start to clear out a little bit. Now, one thing from the rain that we had the past couple of days. Most of that was west of I-35, so this is going to be to the east of it. So at least they did, haven't had quite as much rain in the ground saturated, but they're going to be getting a ton of it primarily off to the east. These guys are going to be super busy this weekend, aren't they? Yeah. yeah overnight and, and tomorrow morning, too, and even uh, some heavy downpours here in town, too. All right. Thank you, Mike. Mm -hmm. By the way, he's our resident Detroit Lions fan. So he's he's had a rough couple of Super Bowl this decades year. as a Lions fan. And which team did you say you liked? Well, Detroit better than Washington. Uh, okay, Cow and then Cowboys. Dallas Cowboys. Cowboys, born and raised in Dallas. All right. So. Well, I will say this: I watch the Cowboys every game because I consider it homework for us here in San Antonio. <laughs> I don't know if that's a good thing or bad thing. That's homework. No, it's it's a good thing. It's homework. <laughs> yeah, it's preparation. <laughs> who, who likes homework? I know. Right? That's I know. what I was like. Uh... Four fifty-three, about sixty-six <laughs> degrees. You're not going to win with her today. I have a feeling. So. No, no, no. New streaming this weekend: the Jack Ryan spinoff, Without Remorse. We have a preview next on GMSA. Are you actually in? Actor Justin Thoreau got a little more handy during the pandemic. He stars in the new drama series, The Mosquito Coast, playing an inventor who can fix anything. And he tells me in the past year, he actually fixed his own dryer. I actually did. I pulled the thing out, did an enormous amount of Googling, um, and, and fixed uh, a very broken dryer. Unfortunately, it didn't need parts. It just required all kinds of dis disassembling and cleaning. The Mosquito Coast premieres today on Apple TV+. Plus. I'm gonna make it right.
Also, new streaming this weekend, the Jack Ryan spinoff Without Remorse, starring Michael B. Jordan, drops today on Amazon. Give me a name. And the third and final season of the Emmy-winning drama Pose premieres Sunday on FX. Country star Morgan Wallen is a finalist for six Billboard Music Awards, and he's banned from the show. Dick Clark Productions, which puts on the awards, says Wallen will not be invited to be a performer, presenter, or to accept any honors if he wins because of the video from earlier this year of Wallen using a racial slur. And happy birthday, Wonder Woman. Actress Gal Gadot is 36 today, while Grammy-nominated rapper Travis Scott is 29. And that's what's happening in Hollywood. I'm Jason Nathans in ABC News, Los Angeles. Are you missing a lizard? San Antonio's Animal Care Services found a monitor lizard on the northwest side on Wednesday, and they think he might have escaped from his home. Yeah, ACS thinks Fred the lizard slipped away from a balcony or patio and then roamed too far and got lost. They say enjoys, quote, being wrapped like uh, in a blanket <laughs> like a little lizard burrito. He, of course, is not up for adoption. Oh, bummer. If you're missing Fred, we have all the information on how to get him back right now on ksat.com. Oh, <laughs> 4.58 on your Friday morning. We're at about 66 degrees. Still ahead on GMSA, knowing whether renter's insurance is right for you. Our Marilyn Moritz tells us the pros and cons to getting it. Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. The U.S. expected to have over 100 million people fully vaccinated by the end of today. We'll have the latest on the coronavirus pandemic across our country. And taking a live look outside with live cam, it's cloudy and you can't see it, but the roads are a little wet this morning. Good morning, everybody. It is Friday. It is April 30th. Thanks for being with us this morning. We have a lot to talk about with weather. It's going to be a wet weekend, that's a, for sure. A very wet weekend, especially if you have outdoor plans for tomorrow, Mike Oster Hage. Yeah, the second half of the weekend is going to be better, chance to, uh, to kind of dry out. But uh, starting with today and especially tonight, overnight and tomorrow, it's going to be very, very wet. You know, it's one of those things, watch what you wish for, because we've gotten a lot of rain, more than three inches out there at the airport the past couple of days and more this morning. But we're going to be getting in some places way too much. Mid 60s right now, a couple of showers out there, wind out of the north at 10 miles per hour. Per hour. The humidity did drop down somewhat in behind that front that moved through yesterday. We'll make it up to the mid 70s later on today and rain chances will definitely start to go up uh, throughout the rest of today. We'll have showers kind of off and on throughout a couple of thunderstorms here and there. The aquifer just went up leaps and bounds yesterday's reading 3.3 feet, which was obviously fantastic news. Now we're still under stage two water restrictions because it's got to stay above that threshold number for about 10 days, but at least we got a big recharge and should get more rain. Although most of what's going to be coming in the forecast is off to the east out of the recharge zone. Mold on the high side, moderate to pecan. Take a look at radar right now, and it is going to be uh, kind of a slow commute this morning. So just take your time. Roads are damp. You know, with the ground kind of saturated in places, might have um, a little bit of still some runoff around the area. Off to the east, if you're planning on doing any traveling, especially down uh, to the east, uh, down around the coast, you may want to forget about it later on today and tomorrow because they're just getting inundated with a lot of rain and going to get a, a whole lot more. And we've got some of these uh, light to moderate showers, maybe a heavier run right there in Lakey and just a few of them in and around town. Uh, but again, we've had some rain. I had some rain coming into work this morning, so we'll keep some of that around here. Now this evening, some of the thunderstorms that develop may be on the strong to severe side, just a very small chance for that. But also, and I think this is going to be the biggest concern, we have a flash flood watch goes into effect technically in a couple of hours, but through tomorrow evening at seven o'clock. And most of this is going to be taking place in the overnight hours and early tomorrow from San Antonio, New Braunfels, and then off to the east and down to the southeast. We're going to be looking at two to four inches and some pockets are going to be even heavier than that. Half a foot or more, especially down along the coastal plain. So showers on off and on this morning and throughout the day. Showers, a couple of thunderstorms will be in the mid 70s today and then overnight tonight and early tomorrow. Heavy rain, especially to the east. Then we go into the rest of the weekend. Well, most of uh, tomorrow is going to be on the wet side, but then more sunshine and warmer on Sunday. How much we 
can expect. Details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Samuel King. Good morning, sir. What's going on? Good morning, Mike. You're mentioning some of the wet roads out there. This is a Loop 410 at Fredericksburg Road, and you can see uh, some slick conditions there, but drivers are making their way through at this hour. So as we uh, head over to the wall, take a closer uh, look at things. As you uh, can see, we've had, had some issues here yesterday with the heavy rain, but this morning, uh, things looking okay. Here's a look, though. We do have uh, one crash still on the board uh, this morning. This is on the east side. This is I-10 East at Foster Road. A bit of a delay once you get past there as well. Hopefully this does get cleared out soon before the commute really gets going in earnest. We put our road conditions tool on again this morning, so we're not seeing the blue, which was ponding. We saw a lot of that yesterday. Today it's just a bunch of wet roads, particularly west of uh, 281. So if you're out in Holotus and Leon Valley, for instance, uh, just watch out for that as you're heading out this morning. And as Mike mentioned, uh, plan for some extra time. Travel times coming in from uh, outside of San Antonio, looking to the northeast, 26 minutes coming in from New Brunswick. 29 minutes on I-10 from Seguin, 24 minutes on I-10 from Bernie. And we'll have another update coming up. Thank you, Samuel. We are gearing up for Election Day here in the Alamo City. Tomorrow, voters will head to the polls to decide several major races, including the race for mayor and 10 city council seats. Our Stephen Cavazos is staying on top of the story and joins us live. Good morning, Stephen. Hey, good morning, Mark. Well, Bear County actually the, broke the record for the most uh, for early voting with most ballots cast ahead of tomorrow's election with more than 101,000 people showing up to vote early. Now, in addition to those races, there are two propositions on the ballot. And of course, the big one is Proposition B. It's become the most controversial item on this year's ballot as well. That would take collective bargaining rights uh, from police officers and change how the city would negotiate further contracts with the police union. Also on the ballot is Proposition A. This would change the wording and expand the use of bonds to include all public improvements. Now, of course, we have explainers for both of these propositions already on our website at ksat.com. Also happening tomorrow, VIA will be offering free rides to polling locations. It's part of their Ride VIA to Vote initiative. All you have to do is present a valid voter registration card, and then you'll be dropped off at the nearest polling location. Now, we will be following all of these races closely on air and online. You can head over to ksat.com for full election coverage. Reporting live north of downtown, Stephen Cavazos, KSAT 12 News. Marco. Now to the pandemic, the U.S. expect to have over 100 million fully vaccinated people by the end of the day today. Public health officials consider that a sign of hope, along with the falling number of virus cases. ABC's Kenneth Moton has the latest. This morning, light at the end of the tunnel is appearing even closer as COVID cases in the U.S. fall by around 8% in the last week. The former pandemic epicenter, New York City, is preparing to fully reopen, allowing full capacity at bars, restaurants, even stadiums starting July 1st. But most Broadway theaters will have to wait until September. You've gone out, you've gotten vaccinated, you've done so much to fight through this crisis. Now we can see that light at the end of the tunnel. According to the CDC, 30% of the U.S. is fully vaccinated. The FDA is expected any day to expand authorization use for the Pfizer vaccine for 12 to 15-year-olds. Dr. Anthony Fauci says he believes all children should be able to get vaccinated by early 2022. Overseas, $100 million worth of U.S. aid is on its way to India, where new daily cases are being shattered. Experts are calling the explosion of cases in that country a fertile ground for new variants, which could be more resistant to the vaccine. Health officials in Shelby County, Tennessee, say they've already detected a case of the variant strain linked to the outbreak in India. It has been circulating. Now, it is a little bit more infectious, but it doesn't cause more severity of illness. And what the good news is that the vaccines that we have are indeed effective. Back in the U.S., another sign of hope. The CDC says cruise ships can set sail starting in July. The new guidelines will require 98% of the crew and 95% of passengers to be fully vaccinated. And in Anaheim, California. I'm really excited just to be back. Feel the Disney magic again. Disneyland is set to reopen today for the first time in more than a year. Kenneth Moten, ABC News, New York. Time right now, 509, 66 degrees. Google says you can now teach your digital assistant to pronounce names correctly. We have what a novel idea. We have details <laughs> still ahead in today's Tech Bites. And the storm left a path of destruction that will keep insurance companies and roofers busy for several days to follow. Next on GMSA, Marilyn Moritz tells us why you need insurance even if you just rent. 
outside with live cam. Keep that umbrella handy. But Mike says we will see uh, some sun at some point this weekend. We are wrapping up the month of April. It's about to get very wet around here. How much rain could we get? Details still to come. Friday morning, welcome back this week's storms. A reminder just how wild and wacky our weather can be, and sometimes it's damaging to our homes. If you own, you likely have homeowner's insurance to protect you, but what if you rent? Do you still need insurance? 12 on your side's Marilyn Moritz explains why the answer is yes. This was just two months ago, the big freeze and a big mess for Amani Elsawa. She lost power and her pipes burst. I was just so shocked because it was literally raining in my apartment. It was gushing out so much that it started flooding almost immediately. The damage was so bad she had to move out. She's been living in a hotel and the bills are piling up. Fortunately, she has renter's insurance that will pay some of her living expenses and help cover much of what she lost. For her policy, she pays about $20 a month. Consumer Report says that's money well spent. It can really offer a safety net if something ever happens. Besides helping cover damage or theft of your property and reimbursement if you have to move out, renter's insurance offers liability protection if someone is injured in your home. It can also cover some possessions when you're not home, like if something is stolen out of your car. Renter's insurance is fairly standardized, though coverage can vary based on the insurance company and where you live. Bottom line, make sure you understand your policy, what's covered and what's not. She says make sure the policy gives you what you need whether that's a low deductible or additional coverage for your valuables. To help with claims, it's important to make a home inventory before disaster strikes. That can be as easy as just making a video of the important things around your home. Marilyn Moritz, KSET 12 News. That's a fantastic idea. Super helpful. I mean, mm -hmm. we all, I rent, so I for sure have home renters insurance. Me too. It's not that expensive. It really isn't. 20 bucks, like you said, well spent. Mm -hmm. A good investment. 514, about 66 degrees. And still ahead, Billie Eilish just announced the first single of her sophomore album. What the artist says the song Your Power means to her and what she hopes it can inspire. Amazon's Prime Day happening earlier this year after the break. When you'll be able to take advantage of those huge deals. The light, it comes from within, it drives you, and it guides you to shine your brightest. As you charge ahead, illuminating the way forward, a light maker. Recognizing that the impact you make comes from the energy you create. Introducing the all-electric lyric, lighting the way. Millions of people are saying yes to Allegra, including the experts. It's the number one allergist recommended brand for non-drowsy relief. Allegra works two times faster than Claritin, so you can get going first thing. It lasts up to six times longer than Benadryl, giving you relief through the late shift. And unlike Zyrtec, Allegra is non-drowsy for all your non-stop adventures. Join the millions saying yes to Allegra. And for kids, try Children's Allegra, the number one allergist recommended non-drowsy brand. In today's Tech Bites, Amazon's Prime Day is happening earlier this year. The company will hold the days-long event that offers huge deals in June. Amazon says they think that date will get more attention. Prime Day usually takes place in July, but it was delayed until fall last year because of the pandemic. Twitter shares could be under pressure today after the company reported user growth that was lower than expected. That disappointing result came despite Twitter's increased effort to combat misinformation. The report was the company's first since it permanently banned former President Trump. And finally, Google says now you can teach your digital assistant to pronounce names correctly. The tech giant says its new feature means you don't have to rely on Google's version. Now you can record the proper pronunciations yourself. Mona Kosar Abdi. Those are your Tech Bites. Have a great day. Well, we've got much more on Mike's rainy forecast coming up in just a moment. But right now we're going to head over to traffic to see, to take a look at the roads. Samuel, what's going on right now?
Oh, well, Alicia and uh, Mark, nothing uh, too uh, bad right now. We did have a crash earlier, but I'll show you that it is cleared up in just a second. This is a 35 Loop 410 on the northeast side. You can see traffic moving well, maybe a little bit of uh, moisture there uh, on the roadways after the uh, showers that this morning uh, that we had here uh, across uh, the area this morning. And you can see traffic flowing uh, pretty well this morning as well. I mentioned that uh, we did have a crash here. This is I-10 East at Foster Road, uh, but you can see there that the icon is gone. The crews uh, appear to have left the scene, but we still have a little bit of a delay here. Uh, 49 miles per hour. Again, that is heading eastbound, so out toward eastern Bear County and uh, Seguin. Looking at the rest of the area, the road uh, conditions tool. Again, most of the uh, wet conditions on the roadways are showing up west of uh, 281 and 35, but you can consider most of the other parts of the area too. You might encounter some wet spots just because it's not green on the map. Uh, just a reminder, we were mentioning this all week that they're going to close I-10 and Bernie this weekend beginning at tonight. That is not happening because of the wet weather that was expected. I had, of course, had the rain yesterday and we're expecting uh, more rain. So this will happen next in two weeks, actually, not this weekend. So I-10 will be open between Bernie and uh, in Bernie between State Highway 46 and uh, Scenic Loop. Not that you want to take a road trip tomorrow anyway. Anyway, on, in, back in San Antonio, Bandera Road 410 to 1604, 11 minutes. So a fairly normal nine minutes heading the other way. So uh, that's what's going on now. We're keeping an eye on things with the, the rain and light showers moving through the area, of course. Yeah, and like I was going to say, like he said, you know, even though the map doesn't show where wet roads are, just assume they're all wet, like mm -hmm. you were talking about, Sam. Absolutely. Yeah. And, you know, a lot of folks had a lot of rain. Most of it was from about San Antonio West a couple of nights ago and the past couple of days out at the airport picked up about three inches of rain. This rain gauge here in town over five inches. I mean, a lot of folks did pick up a ton of rain. The I guess the best thing is the majority of the rain and where the flash flooding may be is going to be further off to the east. So, you know, yes, the ground in some areas is now saturated. So anything that falls is going to be run off like here in town. That's going to be one thing that is going to help out with potentially some uh, flooding in spots and that's going to be late tonight as well as tomorrow. So there's what uh, Sam was talking about. Damp roads out there 410, even though by the airport it's not raining as of right now. We do have a few uh, scattered showers and well, I tell you one thing, this is a whole different story off here to the east. I mean, they are just getting inundated. There's a disturbance off the coast right here. That's going to obviously help to keep rain off to the east. And then there's something, another disturbance, which is going to sort of add to that for the rest of our area. Uh, it, just a few scattered light showers here and there. Some of those around uh, Uvalde heading up toward Lakey. And then we've got just a couple of uh, scattered light showers in and around uh, San Antonio coming in here. Oh, then uh, Frio County kind of sliding up to the north and a few of those scattered showers over there in northwest Bear County. So here's what I'm talking about. We've got the disturbance out here in the Gulf of Mexico and then see this this counterclockwise rotation right here. There is an upper level low, and this is going to be kind of traversing right to the, in the southern portion of the state and then kind of hanging out um, along the coastal plain, and that'll be overnight tonight and tomorrow. So we'll have scattered showers around today, obviously the majority well off there to the east of us, and then especially overnight, that's when the really heavy rain is going to start to kick in, and that's going to be from San Antonio basically to the east along the coastal plain, and then we'll continue with a few more of those showers and even a couple of thunderstorms throughout the day tomorrow. Some of the rainfall totals, I mean, we're looking at about two to four inches off to the east and then just flooding rain basically well off to the east. There's going to be some big problems even in some of our extreme eastern counties tomorrow. And as far as the severe threat, we've got the flash flood watch in effect up until seven o'clock tomorrow night from San Antonio off to the east. And there may be a couple of stronger storms late tonight well down there to the uh, south. And then even tomorrow, there may be a couple of uh, stronger storms around the area. 72 degrees today at noon. Showers, a couple of thunderstorms are possible. Even, you know, one or two of those uh, this morning as well. Lightning, I don't think is going to be a huge issue today. A uh, few showers, a couple of thunderstorms, 75 later on this afternoon. It will be somewhat breezy. Then overnight tonight and early tomorrow mornings when we're going to be seeing some of the heavier rain around here, and again, especially from San Antonio East. We will be clearing out somewhat on Sunday, heating up Monday, another shot at some rain on Tuesday. But again, overnight tonight and early tomorrow morning, that's when we're going to be seeing the really heavy stuff, San Antonio East. It's going to be interesting around here. Yep. So stay home. It's the perfect weekend for some soup, movies. Yeah.
Good idea. Cuddle on the couch. <laughs> Cuddle on the couch. That's right. 524, about 66 degrees. And Billie Eilish just announced the name of the single of her new album. The new details in your Spotlight News up next. Does it keep you in control? Control for you to keep her in the cage? Your Power is the first single off Billie Eilish's just announced sophomore album, Happier Than Ever. On Instagram, Eilish called the song about power dynamics in relationships one of my favorite songs I've ever written, saying it's about many different experiences that we've all either witnessed or experienced. I hope this can inspire change. Happier Than Ever arrives July 30th. Now, JoJo, hit me a nice fade. Sponge cake. Edward James Olmos hit thousands of practice balls to look like a real golfer in Walking with Herb. I mean, a lot of the stuff that we do that you see is real because I really make it. Now, one weekend I took him out to play with a director and a couple of the actors, and he chipped in from uh, the, the, the sand trap, and the look on his face and the look on mine, I don't care that there wasn't a camera around, that was a great moment. Walking with Herb is in theaters for three days only. Details at fathomevents.com. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. Three days only. Very exclusive. Time right now, 528, 66 degrees. Have you ever dreamed of going to outer space? Well, now's your chance. We'll tell you all about it. And the coronavirus vaccine has played a major role in the pandemic, but many are still hesitant about getting the shot. We'll hear what experts have to say in our next half hour. 531, good morning, everybody. It is Friday. It is April 30th. And I guess the key headline this morning, Alicia, is don't put away the umbrella. And give yourself a little extra time, yeah, because the rain isn't going anywhere. Not this weekend. No, uh, this morning, yeah, you need an umbrella, light rain jacket. We've got a few light showers around the area. Not anything really heavy, but obviously nothing like what we had a, a couple of nights ago. So it's just sort of that uh, that nuisance kind of rain, I guess is the best way to put it. So the roads are damp. It's going to be a little slow going. Take your time once you hit the roads. 66 right now. Temperatures are down from where they were uh, yesterday at this time. The humidity is a little bit lower. Still have plenty of it out there. Wind out of the northwest at uh, roughly 10 miles per hour. And yeah, we do have a lot of uh, scattered showers around the area. I mean, just a ton of rain well off to the east. And this is going to come into play. As you can see, it's right near Victoria. But this is really going to come into play then in the overnight hours. But as far as today and short term, as you can see out in portions of the hill country, a few light, moderate showers there. And then we've got a couple of them in and around town. Not a whole heck of a lot. We've got this one little batch of rain right there just moving into Medina. County, Atascosa County, and that's going to be looking like it's uh, sliding up by 35 in toward town over there on the, uh, the west side in the next uh, about to say 15, 20 minutes. And there may be a little bit of uh, kind of drizzle out there, some mist, so keep that in mind. Now, as far as rain, though, and this is something where, you know, I, I keep saying it's watch what you wish for. A few days ago, who would have thought we'd be talking about flash flood watches? But there is one that goes technically goes into effect at 7 o'clock this morning, but basically in effect through tomorrow night at 7 o'clock. San Antonio, New Braunfels, all of Atascosa County to the east and down to the south and to the southeast. We're looking at potentially two to four inches of rain, heavier rain amounts off to the east, and then we're looking at even half a foot or more down there along the, the coastal plain. And that's going to be especially late tonight and in the first portion of the day tomorrow, the overnight hours, early morning hours tomorrow. And then also some of the thunderstorms that pop up later on tonight, <clears throat> excuse me, could be on the uh, strong to potentially severe side. Mold is high. That's going to be staying up there with all this moisture around. Pecan is moderate. 72 at noon, 75 for a high temperature. Few showers, a couple of scattered thunderstorms around the area. Kind of gusty. And like I said, more rain overnight tonight. Uh, it is going to be, especially off to the east, it's going to be very, very heavy. So going to keep a lookout for that. More sunshine, though, later on in the weekend. Details in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Samuel King. Wet roads, any problems? A couple of problems here and there, but let's start here. This is the west side, Loop 4 Ted at State Highway 151. We had some issues here with that heavy rain uh, the other day. Traffic a building there, but it is uh, flowing pretty well uh, this morning here in this area. So let's take a closer look. You can see uh, cars in the foreground moving some uh, slick conditions depending on where you are in the area uh, road conditions tool improving a little bit 
uh, but still consider basically all the roads here uh, wet in the area. You see this icon uh, right in the center. This is a downtown, a stalled vehicle there at I-35 and 37 where they come together. So that's something to uh, look out for if you are an early commuter in the downtown area. Looking at some travel times across uh, the region, 19 minutes coming in on Highway 90 from Castroville, 60 minutes on I-35 from Lytle and 27 minutes coming in on 37 from Pleasanton. So all of our travel times in the green uh, at this hour. So that's good news there. And we'll have another update coming up. See you in a bit, Samuel. Thank you. San Antonio Police and Crime Stoppers are asking for your help in finding a person who shot and killed a man on the city's northwest side. Police say it happened Monday, April 19th in the 7200 block of Hebner Road in Leon Valley. They say a dark SUV with two people inside drove towards Hebner and started shooting at a Ford Taurus. One of them was Eric Torres, later died from a gunshot wound. Please believe there is another car involved in this shooting. If you have any information, call Crime Stoppers at 210 224 stop and via is stepping up again to help as many people as possible to vote this Saturday. They're doing it by offering fare free rides to polling locations. It's part of their ride via to vote initiative. All you have to do to get a free ride is present a valid voter registration card to the bus or van operator tomorrow. Then you'll be dropped off at the nearest polling location. If you're not sure what to bring to the polls tomorrow, we've got you covered right now on KSAT.com. Everything you need to know about the election, from the propositions on the ballot to all the candidates running for mayor and other offices, visit KSAT.com slash vote 2021. And experts have made it clear to end the COVID-19 pandemic, we need to get vaccinated. But there are still a lot of people who say that's not going to happen. CNN's Britt Conway has more from health experts on what that means for everyone else. Different day, same plea. Get vaccinated so we could crush this outbreak. But that starts with crushing vaccine hesitancy, and it's proving to be a challenge among younger people. A CNN poll released Thursday found 31% of adults under the age of 35 don't plan on getting vaccinated. The reasons vary. What's in it for me? What's the purpose of getting vaccinated if nothing changes? People, when they hear it's still emergency use, they still have a little concern. There's also a political divide and an educational divide, but health experts point to the bigger picture, like long COVID. Even for young people who consider their risk of severe COVID to be low, the long-term consequences can be quite serious. And the health of others. You may then infect someone inadvertently, and then you'll pass the infection on to someone else who might pass it on to someone else who might really get seriously ill and might die. Health experts say getting COVID-19 under control means getting herd immunity up to at least 70% of the population. Right now, it's at 30%, which is why there's such a push to spread the word to keep the virus from spreading. People look to their local leaders they look to their faith leaders and they really look to their doctors. As that happens, more people are getting vaccinated because they're talking to other people that have been vaccinated and it worked out well for them. I'm Britt Conway reporting. In your other morning headlines, five people have been arrested and charged with the shooting robbery of Lady Gaga's dog walker. Ryan Fisher, a close friend of Gaga's, was walking her dogs when he was shot and two of Gaga's three French Bulldogs were stolen. Three of the suspects now facing attempted murder charges. The other two charged with accessory to attempted murder. Los Angeles police say four of the suspects are documented gang members. Police say one of the suspects, the same woman who claimed to have found the dogs. And Guatemala's Pacaya volcano is registering new lava flow. Authorities aren't ruling out the possibility of explosive episodes within hours or days. The country's disaster agency recommends staying far away from the lava flow to avoid burns. Respiratory problems and other serious injuries are likely, though the Pacaya volcano has remained active in recent years. It surprised local authorities two months ago with increasing and constant activity. Friday morning, 538, 66 degrees. And Disney is getting ready for when cruise ships are allowed to sail again. Still ahead, the unveiling of their new cruise, the Disney Wish. If you're going to vote tomorrow, you probably know that Proposition B is on the ballot. What does it really mean? RJ Marquez explains next on GMSA. And taking a live look with live cam, it's going to be a rainy weekend, so you want to give yourself a little extra time to get to work this morning. We'll have the details just ahead here on GMSA. 
541 Election Day is tomorrow across San Antonio, and chances are you have heard a lot about Proposition B. Prop B has become the most controversial item on this year's ballot. If you have not voted or still trying to figure out what it is, RJ Marquez has a breakdown. While there have been several mixed messages about Prop B in the past few weeks and months, the simple explanation is that if it passes, it would repeal a state law known as Chapter 174 in San Antonio. So what is Chapter 174 of the Texas Code? Chapter 174 gives the San Antonio Police Officers Association, or the police union, the right to collectively bargain for their labor contract with the city of San Antonio. The state law was adopted by San Antonio voters in 1974. It forces both the police union and the city to meet at the negotiating table to discuss things like officer salaries, benefits, and health care. It also provides the union, known as SAPOA, the right to negotiate hirings, firings, promotions, and discipline. If Prop B passes, it does not mean the police union will dissolve or lose all its negotiating power. There's another form of collective bargaining called meet and confer. It's a system that is used by every major police department in Texas except San Antonio. This system can still bring both sides to the negotiating table, but they would no longer be required to. The police union has to agree to meet and confer and then petition the city. Then city council has to approve it or they could let voters decide. An activist group called Fix SAPD got Prop B on this year's ballot after collecting enough signatures. The group says they want more accountability within SAPD when it comes to issues like officer discipline and misconduct. And they feel a lot of issues with police accountability start with the contract. They are comparing it to defunding. However, KSAT has reported in the past that SAPD's budget would not be affected. Still, Police Union President Danny Diaz says it would threaten competitive benefits and wages for officers. There's a lot to take in when it comes to Prop B. We did a case that explains episode that does a deep dive into what happens if Prop B passes. We also hosted a debate recently between Fix SAPD and the police union, so you can check that out as well on KSAT.com. RJ Marcus, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, RJ. Time right now, 543, 66 degrees. From the start of the pandemic, many thought being stuck indoors would lead to perhaps a baby boom. Just ahead, why experts say there was actually a decline in births. Instead of a pandemic baby boom, 2020 saw a decline in births. According to the Associated Press, births dropped dramatically in many states. In January and February of 2021, about nine months after COVID-19 lockdown swept the nation last spring, births were down 10% compared to the number of babies born the year before. Births for all of 2020 were down 4.3% from 2019, according to preliminary federal data for 2020 from January to September. Every state besides Delaware and Rhode Island saw a drop in births compared to 2019. Experts say the decline in babies could be because when there's a crisis, many people aren't thinking about reproducing. Experts say for women who were pregnant, it was a worry filled experience because they ran the greater risk of severe illness from the virus. And you will soon have the chance to buy a ticket to outer space. Blue Origin wants to send paying customers on rides to the edge of space. Passengers will get to ride 60 miles above Earth and spend several minutes in weightlessness before the capsule parachutes back to Earth. Blue Origin is a space tourism venture funded by Jeff Bezos. Blue Origin's website says more details are coming May 5th. Cruise ships still not allowed to set sail in U.S. waters, but Disney is ready with a new ship when they do. The company unveiled the Disney Wish yesterday in Florida. Features dining experiences based on Star Wars and Marvel characters. Disney says the ship will feel like a Disney attraction at sea. Bookings are set to expe expected to begin next month and it's set to sail in June of 2022. That sounds fun. Let's go. It looks fun, right? Yeah. We're going to check traffic right now. 548 Samuel King standing by in the traffic lab. Good morning. Good morning, Mark and Alicia. This is a look at 281 at Loop 410, very close uh, to the airport. Uh, traffic uh, flowing there, but we do have a crash uh, in that area uh, just popping up on our system. We'll go head over to the wall and take a look at it. We did see some uh, emergency vehicles heading this way. 
and then making uh, the turn there. Uh, and so, and then some uh, light off in the distance there. So let's take a look at that on the map. Again, this is uh, the airport. This is 410 and 281. And this is uh, where the crash is being reported as you're approaching Nacogdoches Road heading eastbound on uh, Loop 410. So that's just going to be something to uh, look out for this morning. Looking across uh, the rest uh, of the area, uh, things looking uh, mostly okay. That's really the only issue we have on the board right now. Uh, you see the green here that indicates wet roads. Of course, yesterday we had ponding on the road, so this is better. But again, just because you don't see it necessarily everywhere doesn't mean that roads uh, might be slick. We did have some, might not, it might not be slick. We did have some rain uh, overnight. Uh, taking a look at gas prices, not sure you want to go anywhere tomorrow with the rain we're expecting, but if you are, gas prices continue to drop down. 238 on average this morning in Bear County. That is the lowest in the state of Texas. Texas among the lowest in the country. And again, uh, just watch out if you're in the airport area, 281, Loop 410, a crash just east of there, guys. Thank you, Samuel. If you have a rain gauge and you haven't emptied out the rain from earlier this week, <laughs> might want to do so. It's going to be interesting to see how much is added to that in some places, especially from San Antonio off to the east. And it is beautiful. I know I've got a couple more of these to show throughout the rest of the morning because when was the last time we looked at rain gauges, basically? And it's so beautiful to see a lot of wonderful water in those rain gauges. Two inches in that one. Some folks picked up a whole bunch. Some folks didn't pick up uh, all that much. I mean, it was nice to see the rain in the past couple of days, and a lot more can be expected. And basically now from San Antonio off to the east. Here's a shot of uh, 410 looking off to the east. And as you can see, I know Sam was talking about that accident. I don't know if those are some flashing lights there or not, but uh, doesn't look like it's uh, hindering traffic too awfully much right there. A lot of scattered showers uh, on portions of the hill country. A ton of rain off to the east. And Folks off to Victoria and um, places around there along the coastal plain are going to be getting way, way too much rain in the next 24 to 36 hours. These scattered uh, showers, maybe some moderate rain as well. A few light little showers here in, uh, in and around town. This batch of rain just sort of fizzled on out. But again, there's just a couple of light little sprinkles here and there. And like Sam was talking about, roads are damp. Now, here's computer model, um, and it's doing a really good job of showing what will be going on throughout the day. We'll have scattered showers, a couple of thunderstorms here and there, a lot more rain down to the east and to the southeast, and a few of those then in the evening hours. Then in the overnight hours, that's when we're going to start to see a lot of heavier rain move on through here. And notice how there's a kind of a bit of a circle right here. There's the upper Upper level low, which is going to be working its way across here. So that will help to keep the rain around in through tomorrow, probably dinner time, and then really start to taper off. But off to the south and east, we're really expecting a whole bunch of rain. As a matter of fact, um, in the watch area, and I'll show you that in a second, San Antonio off to the east, about two to four inches. And, and even overnight, you can pick up a couple of inches of rain in the evening hours and then a lot of it down around Victoria. Now, this is just one computer model, but uh, there will be those spots that have six, seven, eight inches of rain well off to the east for most of our viewing area from about San Antonio. So off to the east, it's going to be roughly in uh, probably the two to four inch range. And a lot of that is going to be in the overnight hours and throughout the first portion of the day tomorrow. And again, we do have the uh, flash flood watch San Antonio, New Braunfels and all of Atascosa County off to the east and to the uh, southeast. And that goes into effect technically in an hour, but through seven o'clock tomorrow night. Again, the the peak of the rain will be after midnight and in the uh, early morning hours tomorrow. 72 degrees today at noon. Showers, a couple of scattered thunderstorms around the area and just, uh, you know, off and on rain throughout the day. 75 degrees for a high temperature. So we still will be a little bit cooler, kind of like yesterday. And then overnight we see heavy rain start to work its way into the area and mainly east of 281. That'll be the best place to see rain. San Antonio off to the east. 75 tomorrow. Heavy downpours can be expected. We clear out Sunday. Nice looking day. I don't know if it'll be dry enough to cut your grass then, but you'll have to sometime next week. Another chance of rain on Tuesday. Well, everything is really greening up. I'm one of the ones that needs to mow. Mike yeah. Osterhage. Me too. All right. Y'all well, get a break this weekend. We no do. Need to. 552, about 66 degrees. And spread the word. Gossip can actually be a good thing. Next on GMSA, how it can help people learn and form social bonds. Here are your lottery numbers. Pick three numbers, 458, Fireball 7. Daily four numbers, 5724, Fireball 0.
and then cash five, three, seven, 10, 21, 22. And then the Texas two-step, we have three, nine, 10, 11, and is it fireball? Lotus ball. 30, there we go. <laughs> Welcome back. In case you didn't hear, researchers at Dartmouth College have a secret to share with you. Despite its negative reputation, a new study finds gossip can be a good thing. Researchers say gossip isn't just about passing rumors and saying bad things about others. It actually serves to create social connections, even helps people learn new things. Researchers add it could also include small talk in person or online. So why do people love to gossip? Experts say it is a rich and multifaceted communication with many functions within social groups. The study showed people can bond over gossip by creating a shared reality by exchanging information. Hmm. Going on vacation soon? Experts say beware of scammers. We'll tell you how to protect yourself coming up in our next hour. Yes, the roads are wet in some places. Samuel King is standing by for an update as we take a look at Transguide right now. The roads look pretty dry right there at 35 at Alamo. Wait till you see Mike's forecast. Radar is already active and we already have a flash flood watch that's going to last through tomorrow evening. What does that mean for South Texas? We have more still to come. One teen shot dead and San Antonio crime stoppers need your help in solving his murder. I'm Stephen Cavazos coming up this morning on GMSA. The search that is underway. San Antonio Spurs fighting to keep their playoff hopes alive. They are back in action on the road in Boston tonight. And let's take a live look outside with live cam. It's going to be a rainy weekend. We'll have Mike's forecast in just a bit. Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Rise and shine. Good morning, everybody. It's Friday. It is April 30th, and we have Alicia Pereira in today. Good to see you. Thank you. Good to be here, and I'm happy that people at home are joining us to start with their Friday morning. And wrap up the month of April and begin the month of May on a very rainy note. As a matter of fact, Mike Ostrays joins us now with more on a flash flood watch that affects just about everybody. Yep. Yeah. Pretty much the eastern half of our viewing area. Um, you know, most of the rain the past couple of days was kind of off to the west. So now everybody else to the east is getting rain. But unfortunately, uh, there's going to be places where there's way too much, especially down along the, the coastal plain. Uh, if you had any plans to travel east or southeast down to the coast uh, tomorrow, late tonight, tomorrow, put that off until Sunday. We will salvage at least half of the weekend. Damp roads out there. Allow yourself some extra time this morning. We've had some uh, showers off and on throughout the course of the morning, so we are going to it's going to be a little slow going here and there. Temperatures uh, out toward the hill country. Everybody's pretty consistent right now. We do have a few little light showers being reported at the airport. Uh, not a heck of a lot. I mean, off to the east, this is only going to get worse. Showers and thunderstorms out here. We're looking at uh, maybe when it's all said and done, half a foot or more of rain in some spots well off to the east, including Victoria. Uh, out in the hill country, just a few scattered showers. We haven't been seeing any lightning strikes detected, but there could be a thunderstorm today. And then again, those few uh, little light showers here, not much. I mean, it's almost too light to be picked up on radar. But again, like we we're talking about, the roads are damp. Flash flood watch in effect up until 7 o'clock tomorrow evening. The peak of the really, really heavy rain looks like it's going to be in the overnight hours and early tomorrow right about up until just after uh, sunrise tomorrow. The flash flood watch does include New Braunfels, San Antonio, Atascosa County, along I-10, and then along 37 down toward the coast. Um, even though you haven't had a lot of rain off to the east from the past couple of days, it is going to be coming hard and heavy. Molds on the high side, pecan is moderate, and temperatures pretty much going to stay steady this morning, right around mid-60s. Wind is going to be picking up out of the northeast about 15, 20 miles per hour, kind of on the breezy side. We'll have showers and a few thunderstorms off and on. Low 70s today at noon, and then mid-70s for a high temperature today. And again, a few more scattered showers and thunderstorms. They will start to pick up in coverage and intensity later on tonight and again overnight and into tomorrow. 
We will salvage Sunday, though. Details on that coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Samuel King. Um, it doesn't seem like there's been a whole lot of big problems out there with these wet roads. No, just some problems here and there. And with that break uh, in the rain, that's been a uh, good news uh, for drivers. When I was coming in here this morning, I'm sure everyone else was. The roads were were, were wet uh, this morning, but uh, not seeing too many issues. But we do have one very close to where this trans guy camera is. This is 281 at Loop 410 by the airport. Uh, there's this uh, crash here uh, just to the east. Now there's two icons there. Uh, so, but it's reported between uh, 281 and Nacogdoches Road, uh, maybe at Broadway here. And then there's uh, the other icon uh, there. Just notice that there are two popping up there. So anyway, indication of an issue there, but you can still see most of the traffic flow there is still in the green. So that's uh, good news there. But again, heading to the airport or in the airport area or leaving the airport, uh, just something to look out for. Loop 410 at Nacogdoches Road. Looking throughout the uh, rest of the area, we mentioned a uh, break in the rain, so we're seeing uh, less uh, of the uh, green on the road conditions map, but it doesn't mean we won't want run into some uh, wet spots here and there. Uh, this new issue just popping up here within the past uh, five minutes or so, uh, I-10 eastbound, so heading uh, into town at 1604, or some sort of a lane blockage there. It looks like there's some sort of stalled vehicle or, or some sort of incident there. So we'll get some more information on that. Again, this is just coming in here at the area 1604 and I-10. Uh, looking at uh, travel times, uh, I-10 coming in from Bernie, still looking good. 24 minutes, 29 minutes coming in from the East and Seguin, 26 minutes coming in from New Braunfels this morning. And we will have another update coming up. Thank you, Samuel. New this morning, San Antonio police believe road rage may have led to a teen's murder last week. 17-year-old Eric Torres died after police say he was shot while driving in the 7200 block of Hubner Road near Highway 16 in Leon Valley. Stephen Cavazos is live downtown with a search for the killer that is still underway. Mark Alicia, investigators say that Torres and another passenger were actually in a red sedan when a dark color SUV that was driving westbound drove up to their vehicle and began to fire shots. Now, Torres and that passenger were both hit by bullets, but it was Torres who died from his injuries. It's not clear what prompted this to happen, but investigators believe this could have been linked to a possible road rage incident. They say another red sedan similar to the one Torres was in may have been involved in that road rage incident with a suspect SUV minutes before the shooting. Now, of course, Crime Stoppers is offering a $5,000 reward cash with any information that could lead to any possible arrest. You can call the number on your screen now. That's 210-224-7867. Reporting live north of downtown, Stephen Cavazos, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Stephen. And a silver alert has been issued by the Castle Hills Police Department overnight. Take a look. This is 74-year-old Mark Anthony Subrod. He is about 5'8", 220 pounds, has blonde hair and blue eyes. Police say he was last seen around midnight wearing a white t-shirt and black shorts on Zornia Drive. That's between West Avenue and Northwest Military Highway. Officers say he took off in a silver 2012 GMC 1500 with a license plate 13420DV. If you have any information on his whereabouts, you're asked to contact the Castle Hills Police Department at 210-342-2341. Let's take a look at the COVID-19 numbers here in Bear County. As of this morning, Metro Health reporting 341 new COVID cases here at home. Luckily, no new deaths have been reported. There are 240 COVID patients in local hospitals. 67 people are in ICU. 44 are on ventilators. And beginning today, the Alamo Dome is offering drive-up vaccinations and no appointments are needed. Anyone 16 and older can stop by and get vaccinated. The Alamo Dome will be open Tuesday through Saturday from 9 a.m. to 6.30 p.m. This change comes as the site has seen an increased number of no-shows. So far, more than 839,000 people in Bear County have received at least one dose. Speaking of the pandemic, the U.S. is expected to have over 100 million fully vaccinated people by the end of today. Public health officials consider that a sign of hope, along with the falling number of virus cases. ABC's Kenneth Moton has the latest. This morning, light at the end of the tunnel is appearing even closer as COVID cases in the U.S. fall by around 8% in the last week.
The former pandemic epicenter, New York City, is preparing to fully reopen, allowing full capacity at bars, restaurants, even stadiums starting July 1st. But most Broadway theaters will have to wait until September. You've gone out, you've gotten vaccinated, you've done so much to fight through this crisis. Now we can see that light at the end of the tunnel. According to the CDC, 30 percent of the U.S. is fully vaccinated. The FDA is expected any day to expand authorization use for the Pfizer vaccine for 12 to 15 year olds. Dr. Anthony Fauci says he believes all children should be able to get vaccinated by early 2022. Overseas, $100 million worth of U.S. aid is on its way to India, where new daily cases are being shattered. Experts are calling the explosion of cases in that country a fertile ground for new variants, which could be more resistant to the vaccine. Health officials in Shelby County, Tennessee, say they've already detected a case of the variant strain linked to the outbreak in India. It has been circulating. Now, it is a little bit more infectious, but it doesn't cause more severity of illness. And the good news is that the vaccines that we have are indeed effective. Back in the U.S., another sign of hope. The CDC says cruise ships can set sail starting in July. The new guidelines will require 98 percent of the crew and 95 percent of passengers to be fully vaccinated. And in Anaheim, California, I'm really excited just to be back. Feel the Disney magic again. Disneyland is set to reopen today for the first time in more than a year. Kenneth Moten, ABC News, New York. President Biden and Vice President Harris both on the road to celebrate his first 100 days. The president visited Georgia, pitching major investments in airports, roads and broadband. This it's a once in a generation investment in America. It's the biggest jobs plan in this country since World War II. During the trip, President Biden and the First Lady met with former President Jimmy Carter. The president is trying to garner support for his agenda and getting it funded by Congress. We're going to have more on President Biden's 100-day agenda in our next half hour here on GMSA. Time check right now on your Friday at 609 at about 66 degrees. And the first night of the NFL draft is in the books. When we return, we'll take a look at the newest Dallas Cowboy. Spurs back in action tonight, looking to get back into the win column. We've got a preview of their game with the Celtics. And taking a live look outside with live cam. It's rainy, it's drizzling, and it's going to be a wet weekend. Rain isn't going anywhere. We'll be back with more. Welcome back. The Spurs are back in action and on the road tonight. They'll be in Boston taking on the Celtics. San Antonio is sitting at 31 and 30 right now and are fighting to keep their playoff hopes alive. Should be a great matchup. Pro football coverage powered by Davis Law Firm. First night of the NFL draft now in the books and the Cowboys have made their selection. Dallas selected Micah Parsons with the 12th overall pick in the draft. A linebacker out of Penn State collected 191 tackles, six and a half sacks, six forced fumbles in two seasons of college ball. Wait. All right, in case you're wondering, Texans fans, Houston traded away all of their first and second round picks this year, so they won't be selecting a player until the third round this weekend. And trending now on KSAT.com, a special group of nuns are holding a fun run with a purpose. The Salesian Sisters of St. John Bosco will be holding a virtual to benefit its youth ministry. For more details, you can head over to KSAT.com. Well, I guess there's good news on the roads. We're not dealing with heavy rainfall. Samuel King is here with an update from the traffic lab. Yes, uh, thank you, Mark and Alicia. But we do still have this issue here. We now have a good view of what's going on on Loop 410 near the airport. This is the view from Loop 410 at Broadway. You can see the emergency vehicles there uh, in the foreground. We're going to give you a better look at this as we head over uh, here uh, to the wall. And we'll take the banner off briefly. There we go. And so you can see uh, what's going on there. This is a crash eastbound on Loop 410. You see at least a shoulder is blocked there. And you can kind of see uh, some of the delays uh, stretching back there. So this has been going on uh, for about uh, 
20 to 30 minutes now in this area and still blocked off there. So that's something to uh, watch out for if you're heading east away from the airport uh, this morning. We have uh, this crash and this is how that looks on the map. You can see still fairly green, but as you saw there on, on the trans guide, there, there is some blockage there and people are slowing down uh, in that area. So just watch out for that uh, this morning. Now looking at other parts uh, of the area, that's really the uh, only other situation there, but we do have this one still on the map. Uh, this is I-10 eastbound there. Lane is blocked at 1604, sort of the ramp as some sort of vehicle uh, there blocking uh, so the way there. So hopefully that gets cleared out soon before the commute really gets going in the next little bit. Now, looking at, again at travel times, let's talk about the east. 26 minutes coming in from New Braunfels this morning, and 29 minutes coming in from Seguin, and 23 minutes coming in from the Lavernia area this morning. And again, just watch out for this here, Loop 410 at Broadway, just east of the airport, guys. Thank you, Sam. Real quick, Mike, before we get to traffic, I want to mention a friend of mine, Steve Beilstein, is retiring from SAPD after 26 and a half years oh, yeah. service out at the Prue Road substation. Congratulations, Steve. Enjoy your retirement. Congratulations. Yeah. Yeah. I had a chance to meet him years ago. Yeah, he's a fun guy. Nice guy, yeah. Very nice guy. Um, you know, we're talking about the, the morning commute and saying how there's not a whole lot of rain out there. Wet roads, obviously, so, you know, as you're, as you're hitting the roads, obviously watch out for the buses and take it easy, but the I guess the good news with this big rain event coming, that it's be going to be coming tomorrow morning or overnight tonight, tomorrow morning. So uh, being on a Saturday, obviously it's not going to really do a lot of folks aren't going to be hitting the roads for work and school. 66 degrees uh, right now. we got a couple of uh, light sprinkly showers around the area and then 75 for a high temperature later on today. A few showers scattered about here yeah, off and on uh, even a thunderstorm or two. It's going to be breezy again today. Northeasterly wind about 10 to 15 miles per hour. You know, the, the old saying April showers bring May flowers and we got a lot of April showers and I'm going to get some May showers too to help out with flowers, but a beautiful picture right there. So all of our lawns, all of our uh, gardens, everything else is just love and all of this rain. And then of course, that means we're going to have to cut one of these days coming up here if we get a break in the action as far as uh, things drying out a little bit. As you can see, the roads are damp over there, 410 looking off to the uh, east. And uh, boy, just a ton of rain well off to the east. And this is going to continue to dump a whole lot in the next 24, 36 hours out there. A disturbance out in the Gulf of Mexico. And then some scattered showers in parts of the hill country. Not a lot of rain. We had a little bit more earlier this morning and just a few little scattered sprinkles, light showers here and there, enough to keep the roads damp. Uh, off to the west, notice how there is a little bit of a counterclockwise rotation right there, an upper low, and this is what's going to be kind of scooching down to the south of San Antonio and then kind of coming up uh, along the coast, and that's going to combine with that big system off to the east, and that's what's going to help out with the heavy rain. So like I said, off and on showers, thunderstorms today, and then tonight things are going to start to pick up, especially again to the east with the very, very heavy rain. We'll see some uh, potentially heavier rain here in town overnight, and the best, uh, I guess the peak of it is going to be in the late or early morning hours tomorrow up through, say, about mid-morning. And we'll see some of the, the peak of the rain, but we'll still have some of these showers around then throughout the rest of the day tomorrow. And then all this is going to be working its way on out of here. Rainfall totals, we're looking at about two to four inches off to the east and even heavier amounts than that, upwards of six inches or even more than that along the, the coastal plain. And of course, we do have the flash flood watch through tomorrow evening at 7 o'clock. San Antonio, kind of the eastern half of our metro area, and then along 10 and down along 37. Also, there is going to be the chance for a couple of stronger thunderstorms well down to the south and to the southwest. Maybe some high winds and uh, about to say golf ball size hail is going to be possible. And then also another severe threat tomorrow as well with some stronger winds and maybe some hail thrown in. But I think the biggest concern with all of this is going to be the potential for some very heavy rain. 72 degrees today at noon. A couple of showers, a couple of thunderstorms around here, and then a high temperature today up to 75 showers. Again, few thunderstorms off and on, kind of breezy today. Rain definitely starts to pick up then tonight, overnight, and the first part of the day tomorrow. 75 once again, and then 85 on Sunday. We do clear out somewhat Sunday. Monday is going to heat up Monday. Then another chance of rain on Tuesday and a bit of a break in temperatures and humidity by the middle part of next week. If you have any outdoor plans, you're pretty much going to be rained out. Sunday. 
Boom to Sunday for outdoor plans. All right. Yeah. Well, thank you so much. Time right now, 620, 66 degrees. Some changes coming for Amazon Prime Day. When you can expect to cash in on those big deals next. At QVC, we're celebrating you during our friends and family event. All April long, you'll find the brands you love and love the ones you get to discover. The hosts, experts, and personalities with the stories behind the products and special deals every day, including 40% off an ever-changing selection of products. Savings end soon, only on QVC and QVC.com. Irresistibly delicious. Pour some almond breeze For the maestros of the creamiest Never must have smoothies It's irresistibly delicious More almond breeze, please If there was a world championship for this I'd be a sports legend I'd be a household name But there isn't And I wouldn't do anything different if there was Neutro, feed clean in this morning's GMA First Look, call it the cruising comeback. Tom McAlpin is the president and CEO of Virgin Voyages. He says they're ready to get sailing in America. Americans like to, to travel. They deserve it. They need to get out there. The cruise industry was shut down over a year ago when the pandemic hit. Now, bookings are soaring. Virtually every cruise line partner that we talk with is uh, seeing exceptional bookings for 2022 and beyond. But some possible rough legal waters. Florida's governor had previously banned companies in Florida from requiring vaccines. We fall under the, the jurisdiction of the CDC with regard to the rules and regulations and, and a regulatory body. These are things that will have to be sorted out. And coming up at 7 a.m., we'll have a live report from Port Miami and tell you the best time to book tickets to lock in low prices. With your GMA First Look, I'm Gio Benitez, ABC News, Miami. Heads up, Amazon's Prime Day is happening earlier this year. The company holds the days-long event that offers huge deals in June. Amazon says they think that date will get more attention. Prime Day usually takes place in July, but was delayed until fall last year because of the pandemic. And Twitter shares could be under pressure today after the company reported user growth that was lower than expected. That disappointing result came despite Twitter's increased effort to combat misinformation. The report was the company's first since it's permanently banned former President Trump. And finally, Google says you can now teach your digital assistant to pronounce names correctly. The tech giant says this new feature means you don't have to rely on Google's version. You can now record the proper pronunciations yourself. All right, the idea of a surgeon blasting music while performing a surgery may sound like a bad idea, but a new study suggests it could improve their performance. Not just any genre of music. Study says hip hop and classical are most effective. Researchers in Germany have studied the effects of different genres of music on surgeons' performances ranging from rock to classical. They found hip hop and classical are best at improved performance, while rock or radio music is less effective. Music was first introduced in operating rooms in 1914 to reduce anxiety in patients. Researchers also found it's best to play the music at 70 decibels. That's equivalent to office noise or the noise inside a car at 60 miles per hour. The German surgery suite, wouldn't they be playing a polka, right? <laughs> Typically, right? <laughs> I don't know if that's, they say it reduces the anxiety of patients, but I feel like. Polka would increase anxiety. Well, <laughs> polka and hip hop, yeah. Put that together. A mix. Woo. That's a bad mashup. 626, about 66 degrees. Election day is tomorrow, and VIA wants to help you get to the polls. Still ahead, what you have to do to get a free ride. Are you starting to book those summer vacations? You may want to be cautious of those third-party booking scams. Next half hour, how scammers are targeting travelers this year. And looking at the roads with Transguide, flashing lights 410 at Broadway. Samuel King has some answers on what's going on out there still to come. We are less than 24 hours away from Election Day. Good morning, I'm Stephen Cavazos, and coming up on GMS, say what you should know before heading to the polls. President Biden hits the road to sell his recovery plan. I'm Micah Jachi reporting in Washington. Coming up, we'll take a look at his first stop in Georgia. 
outside with live cam morning clouds in place. We have some showers in the area. Wait to see what's happening down along the coast and a flash flood watch has already been issued for a good portion of the weekend. Good morning. Today is Friday, April 30th. We made it through April. We did, and we're going to wrap up the month and start May on a soggy note. Mike Ostrade joins us now for more on that. When could we see the heavy rain around here, Mike? Starting uh, probably later on tonight, mm -hmm. overnight, and then throughout the first portion of the day uh, tomorrow. And yeah, tomorrow being Election Day, um, don't let the rain put you off from from voting if you haven't voted early. But uh, yeah, there are going to be some areas where it is we're getting way too much rain tomorrow and especially off to the east. Lots of clouds out there. Uh, we haven't had really any showers in town for the past uh, couple of hours. The roads are still kind of on the damp side, so you obviously want to take it easy. We are at 66 right now. Dew points at 62, so it has dropped down from where it was yesterday. Wind out of the northwest at about uh, north to northwest at about uh, 10 15 miles per hour and it will be on the breezy side today. Yeah, this is what's going on off to the east. There's a kind of a disturbance lying across right along the, the coast and then getting all that great moisture from the uh, Gulf of Mexico. That's what's producing those heavy showers and thunderstorms and it's well off to the east where the heaviest rain is going to be uh, when it's all said and done tomorrow. A couple of scattered showers uh, out in portions of the hill country and again, really nothing in and around town right now, but just be on the lookout for a couple little damp spots here and there. Mold is high. Pecan is on the moderate side. Flash flood watch, and it's been issued up until 7 o'clock tomorrow night. New Braunfels, San Antonio, Atascosa County off to the east and southeast, two to four inches widespread and then heavier amounts upwards of a half a foot or more down there along the coastal plain. So showers off and on this morning, you know, a couple of them take an umbrella just to, to keep it handy because you will need it then this afternoon, especially tonight and tomorrow. Showers, a couple of thunderstorms will start to develop later on. And then, like I said, especially overnight mainly off to the east and then we will see some more sunshine on Sunday. It's going to be pretty wet most all of day tomorrow and warmer on Sunday. Then it's going to be getting even hotter beyond that. Details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority Samuel King, what's going on, sir? Haven't had too many big, big problems. Not too many uh, big problems, and Mike, and the travel times do look good. This is a look from uh, the south end and west, 28 minutes coming in on 37 from the Pleasanton area to downtown San Antonio, 19 minutes on Highway 90 from Castroville and 17 minutes from the Lytle area into downtown San Antonio. But we do have this issue. This is a loop 410 at Broadway. At least one lane is closed uh, this morning and the shoulder after a crash. This is just east of the airport. We'll take a, a closer look at that as we head uh, over here to uh, the wall in just a moment. And this is been going on probably about 45 minutes or so now extended sort of uh, crash uh, cleanup here. Uh, so you see that the closure is actually uh, back here a little bit and then you see this in the foreground traffic uh, moving by. We're not the height of a sort of the commute, so that's a good thing. And so just uh, take a look this space out just took the banner off there so you can get a another better look at that. Again, this is eastbound on Broadway starting to slow down a little bit here. 60 uh, miles per hour and 281 starting to slow down a little bit approaching uh, loop 410 looking at the rest of the area, mostly looking good. We do have uh, still some uh, wet road conditions specifically around uh, New Braunfels, but just because you don't see it doesn't mean there might be some lingering moisture on the road, so be careful. Also still have this on the board out here. This is I-10 East at 1604, and we see uh, some slowdowns on 1604 approaching I-10. There is a lane blockage there. The last check, uh, that vehicle is still there, so that's also something to navigate. Uh, but again, at the moment, uh, things looking mostly fine, not as many people on the roads, but we know that will change very quickly here in the next hour. So you might want to get going if you have to run some errands before work. And we'll have another update coming up. Thank you, Samuel. Election Day fast approaching, and there's several key races we are keeping a close eye on. Some of those include the race for mayor, 10 city council seats, and two propositions. Stephen Cavazos live just north of downtown on this Friday morning with what you should know before you head to the polls tomorrow. Good morning, Stephen. Hey, good morning, Mark Alicia. Well, it was a record breaking year for early voting here in Bear County with more than 101,000 people showing up to cast their ballots early. Now, ahead of Election Day, those efforts to get people to the polls are now ramping up. Tomorrow, VIA will be offering free rides to polling location, and it's part of their Ride VIA to Vote initiative. All you have to do is present a valid voter registration card, then you'll be dropped off at the nearest polling location. Now, in addition to those races, there are two propositions that are on the ballot. 
Proposition A would expand the use of bonds to include all public improvements. But of course, the big one that everyone's keeping an eye on is Proposition B. Now that would take collective bargaining rights from police officers and change how the city would negotiate further contracts with police union. Of course, it has also become the most controversial item on this year's ballot. And our own RJ Marquez breaks down what this could mean for the police union, a choice that's left for voters to decide. While there have been several mixed messages about Prop B in the past few weeks and months, the simple explanation is that if it passes, it would repeal a state law known as Chapter 174 in San Antonio. So what is Chapter 174 of the Texas Code? Chapter 174 gives the San Antonio Police Officers Association, or the police union, the right to collectively bargain for their labor contract with the city of San Antonio. The state law was adopted by San Antonio voters in 1974. It forces both the police union and the city to meet at the negotiating table to discuss things like officer salaries, benefits, and health care. It also provides the union, known as SAPOA, the right to negotiate hirings, firings, promotions, and discipline. If Prop B passes, it does not mean the police union will dissolve or lose all its negotiating power. There's another form of collective bargaining called meet and confer. It's a system that is used by every major police department in Texas except San Antonio. This system can still bring both sides to the negotiating table, but they would no longer be required to. The police union has to agree to meet and confer and then petition the city. Then city council has to approve it or they could let voters decide. An activist group called Fix SAPD got Prop B on this year's ballot after collecting enough signatures. The group says they want more accountability within SAPD when it comes to issues like officer discipline and misconduct. And they feel a lot of issues with police accountability start with the contract. They are comparing it to defunding. However, KSAT has reported in the past that SAPD's budget would not be affected. Still, Police Union President Danny Diaz says it would threaten competitive benefits and wages for officers. There's a lot to take in when it comes to Prop B. We did a Case That Explains episode that does a deep dive into what happens if Prop B passes. We also hosted a debate recently between Fix SAPD and the police union, so you can check that out as well on KSAT.com. RJ Marcus, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, RJ. And according to a recent poll from the University of Texas and the Texas Tribune, Texas voters remain concerned about the pandemic, but feel safer about being out in public. While Texans seem to be returning to a somewhat normal lifestyle, 74% say they are still staying away from large groups and 80% are wearing masks around people outside their household. You can read more about the findings in this poll just ahead on just head over to KSAT.com. Right now, 638 San Antonio Police and Crime Stoppers are asking for your help in locating a suspect responsible for the shooting and killing another man on the city's northwest side. This happened Monday, April 19th in the 7200 block of Hebner Road in Leon Valley. Police say a dark SUV drove up towards Hebner and started shooting at people in a Ford Taurus. Two people inside that car were hit. One of them was Eric Torres, who later died from a gunshot wound. Police believe another vehicle is involved. If you have any information, call Crime Stoppers at 210-224-STOP. And the SAPD body cam footage from three shootings where police shot and killed someone are expected to be released to the public. But SAPD also says they will not release body cam footage for two other shootings. Those are from February 27th on Gabriel Street, where a man was shot by police after shooting someone else. And March 26th on Brighton, where a man was shot by police after threatening his estranged wife with a knife. SAPD says these will not be released because they involve domestic violence. We are expected to get the body cam footage and 911 recordings from these incidents on your screen. That's the airport shooting, pin road shooting, and clutter shooting, which all happened in April. In December, SAPD said it would release body cam footage to the public when officers shoot people or use force that results in death within 60 days after the incident, with few exceptions. SAPD has yet to release any body cam footage under that policy. President Joe Biden marking his first 100 days in office by going on the road. Meanwhile, Republicans are pushing back on the president's agenda and its $4 trillion price tag. ABC's Ike Ajachi is in Washington with the latest. President Biden hitting the road to sell his massive recovery plan. Before stepping into Marine One to head to Georgia, cameras capturing this moment between the president and the first lady, Mr. Biden picking up a flower for his wife. Once on the ground, the president holding a rally for the state that handed him a Democratic majority in Congress. You changed America. You began to change America. And you're helping us prove 
that democracy, democracy can still deliver for the people. The president reiterating the importance of his plan. It is a, it's a once in a generation investment in America. He's calling for more than $4 trillion in new spending by proposing a massive child care and education plan, including universal pre-K, tuition-free community college, and paid family leave. He's also urging Congress to pass his infrastructure bill, arguing that it will create millions of jobs. Republicans are comparing it to a spending spree. He could have done his speech in about 30 seconds. He could have walked up and said, I'm President Biden, thank you for watching, here's my message. I want all of you to send every bit of your money and freedom to Washington. During his rally, demonstrators interrupting Biden's speech, shouting to the president to abolish ICE. I agree with you. I'm working on it, man. Give me another five days. Toward the end of his rally, Mr. Biden telling the American people that he's optimistic about the future. America's on the move again. We're choosing hope over fear, truth over lies, light over darkness, <laughs> and we're working. We're working again. President Biden's next stop will be in Philadelphia, where he'll speak outside the 30th Street Station. He's doing that in order to commemorate the 50th anniversary of Amtrak. Ike Ajachi, ABC News, Washington. Friday morning time check, 641, about 66 degrees. And as you start booking your summer vacations, if a deal seems too good to be true, well, it probably is. Some things to look out for so you don't get scammed when we return. 6.45 this Friday morning, as more people start to book their summer vacations, experts from the Better Business Bureau are warning people of new scams. The BBC says scammers have reportedly launched fake booking sites that are showing up in search engines. The BBB says these criminals have created a website that appears to sell airline tickets. The flights are not real. Rather, the flights are real, but the prices are not. Some consumers have also reported getting a call from customer service saying there's been a price increase in the flight they booked and they need to pay more. The BBB wants everyone to be careful when booking a trip and make sure you're dealing with a legitimate company. If you're unsure if the website's real, the BBB has offered several tips. First, when booking through a third party, make sure the company is familiar. Be suspicious, be suspicious of website with no working customer service number and no physical address and be aware of typos. Lastly, book with your credit card. Fraudulent charges on a credit card can usually be disputed. Right now, 646, and without dispute, the morning commute is off and running. Let's see how it's looking out there with Samuel King. <laughs> Thanks, Mark and Alicia. This is Loop 14 at Broadway. We've been showing you uh, this for much of the hour, but you can see uh, traffic flowing a little bit better now. It appears uh, that that crash there is on the way to being cleared, and we'll take a closer uh, look at that situation here uh, at the wall this morning, and you can see uh, traffic flowing eastbound and westbound pretty clear. Uh, we did have this crash, but we are now seeing some delays on 281 uh, around the airport there, so that's starting to build, but uh, traffic starting to get back up to speed there, loop 410 eastbound. Uh, other parts uh, of the region, uh, things mostly looking okay. A few uh, wet roads here and there. Also still have this issue on the northwest side. This is I-10 at Loop 1604. Understand uh, from I-10 sort of eastbound to 1604 east, so heading to downtown and then 64 going this way, the, the ramp is kind of blocked off there. A flatbed trailer uh, was actually uh, sort of uh, came off there and it's sort of blocking the lane so they're trying to get that cleared up uh, so that's going to be a situation hopefully they get that clear because we know this area does tend to back up here uh, around the, in the seven o'clock hour just in horn uh, with more information on that uh, we've been mentioning this week so you but forget it this is not happening up here in bernie uh, this weekend i know we were trying to give you the early heads up but Texas has decided to push this back a couple of weeks because of the rain that we're expecting uh, but not that you would want to take a road trip this weekend, but if you do, gas prices starting to trickle back down. Bear County, the lowest in the state, 238, 257 in Texas. And here is a look again, Loop 410 and Broadway moving well, guys. Thank you very much, Samuel. Speaking of the roads, folks, if you're headed to Houston or the coast this weekend, uh, especially today, 
Wow, is it busy on the radar right now, Mike Osterhage? Yes, and uh, overnight and into tomorrow, it's going to be uh, really busy. And now this morning, though, you know, we're showing that, that one transguide camera. And then over here, we haven't had any showers in town for the past couple of hours. So it uh, looks like roads, because of the, you know, the traffic on there, is, are drying out just a little bit. We do have a few scattered showers in parts of the hill country. And we'll continue to have one or two off and on. So grab an umbrella, have your rain jacket handy, just because we'll see some rain off and on throughout the day. And, yeah, this is the mess off to the east and this is only going to get worse and notice how these showers are starting to work their way to the east just a little bit but a lot of torrentially heavy rain is going to be falling along the the coastal plain now as far as computer model which i think is doing a fantastic job of what's going to be going on because we've got this disturbance out here to the east and then there's an upper low which is out to the west of us right now and that's going to be working its way across here and so that's what's going to help to feed some of these showers so again showers thunderstorms off and on throughout the day then things are going to start to pick up tonight and as you can see, the main area for the rain is pretty much about 281 and then off to the east. Showers, a few thunderstorms, and I think some of the heaviest rain is also going to be uh, about mid to late uh, overnight hours and right around sunrise first part of the, the morning tomorrow. Again, the majority of that rain off to the east and we'll continue to keep a few scattered showers around even throughout the day. And doesn't mean you won't see any in the uh, hill country. This computer model does have a, a cluster of rain out in the hill country tomorrow afternoon, then things will start to uh, taper off. And rainfall totals, uh, San Antonio off to the east, two to four inches can be expected and heavier rainfall amounts well off to the east. And of course we have the flash flood watch that is in effect up until seven o'clock tomorrow night. New Braunfels, San Antonio, and then off to the east and down to the uh, southeast. You know, it's what we've been wishing for, but we're getting way too much. It seems like it's either feast or famine. Three inches of rain, more than that, out at the airport officially the past couple of days. We had some more earlier this morning, and we're definitely going to be added to overnight tonight and tomorrow. 72 degrees, a couple of showers, a couple of thunderstorms scattered about here and there. It won't rain constantly today, uh, even this afternoon. But then tonight, it's going to pick up in aerial coverage, going to pick up uh, in intensity as well. And there may actually be a couple of stronger thunderstorms down to the uh, south and southwest late tonight night. Tomorrow, again, it's going to be very wet, especially the first portion of the day. Then we clear out somewhat on Sunday. Another chance of rain on Tuesday, but prior to that, we're going to be well up into the 90s Monday. And what's happening on SA Live today? All right. Take to the skies, Alamo helicopters tour. You can go on a nice little tour of the city. We did the one that goes up around the quarry there. Fiona and I did, and this is, you know, they've got little packages. If you want to do date night, they've got one that shows you all the different missions. If you've never been in a helicopter before, it is so cool um, because you're, you're about a thousand feet up or so. And so you get a really good view of town. It's a whole different perspective too. And very I'm fun. I'm sure they had to force Mike into a helicopter. Yeah. Oh gosh. Got to drag him in there. Mm -hmm. How really fun. No, not really, but yeah, it's, oh. a, it's a, it's a bunch of fun flies out of Stinson. So. SA live today yep. at one right here on KSAT 12 right now, 651, 66 degrees. There's only about 30 days left in this year's session of the Texas legislature, and some lawmakers and advocacy groups are hoping laws regarding fees for electric vehicle owners beat the clock tomorrow on GMSA the effort to make up for lost gas tax revenue outside with live cam so glad you picked GMSA to start your Friday we have lots of clouds out there the news you need to know before you go is still to come Good morning. Coming up on GMA, a hopeful sign in the battle against COVID. Cases are falling across this country. More than half adult of the adults in the U.S. have gotten at least one dose of a vaccine. Dr. Zha will join us live to talk all about it right here on GMA. Right now, five minutes till seven. And we know it's going to be a rainy weekend, but right now let's take a look at the road. Samuel, how are things looking out there? Travel time's looking good to start so far. I-10 coming in from Bernie to downtown, 24 minutes, 26 minutes from the New Braunfels area. This is 1604 at the Bandera Road. That looks okay right now, but we do uh, have some issues uh, developing on 1604. So let's get right to the maps. We still have uh, this situation. The, the ramp is blocked from I-10 uh, South uh, north, uh, southbound inbound to uh, 1604 eastbound sort of gets screwy uh, in that area. Also have a new crash mic at 1604 and State Highway 151.
Thank you, sir. Roads right now are pretty dry. We haven't had a lot of rain uh, in the past hour, hour and a half or so. We do have some scattered showers out there. And then notice the rain down there along the, the coastal plain. It's starting to drift a little bit more to the west. We'll see more off and on showers, thunderstorms throughout the day. 75 for a high temperature, kind of breezy. And then to the uh, flash flood watch is in effect up until 7 o'clock tomorrow evening. We are going to have potentially heavy rain, especially in the overnight hours and throughout the first portion of the morning tomorrow. Thanks, guys. Thank you. I hope you'll have a good Friday. We'll see you back here for GMSA at 9.